from a small family-run business to an annual turnover of $1.3 billion in FY21-22, from a beginner to a market cap of 62,306 crore rupees, from one brand to a house of 18 trusted brands, from starting in Mumbai to expanding to 25 countries across Asia and Africa. Such is the story of Marico. Be it a mother oiling her kid's hair with parachute oil or the sizzling sound of spices frying in Safola's heart-healthy cooking oil, Marico has captured every Indian household. The story of Marico is one of resilience, innovation and adaptability. Today, join us on a journey through the pages of history as we explore the inspiring story of Marico. The tale goes back to 1971. Mr. Harsh Mariwala, a 20-year-old commerce graduate, had joined his father's company, Bombay Oil. At the time, Bombay Oil was a B2B company in the spice trade. Harsh dreamt big. He envisioned a branded FMCG market for refined oils. And by the mid-1980s, Mariwala had established a consumer products division that was responsible for 80% of Bombay Oil's income. However, for the consumer products division to truly prosper in the fast-moving consumer goods or FMCG industry, it had to become a standalone independent entity. After three long years of persuasion, Mariwala finally convinced his family to spin off the consumer product segment of Bombay Oil into the new company, Marico. And this marked the birth of Marico as we know it. To establish a strong market presence, Mariwala focused on diversifying the product portfolio and expanding the distribution network. His intense focus on research, innovation and customer feedback was what helped him beat giants like HUL and ITC. The mind share of Marico is such that coconut oil in India has become synonymous with the blue bottle of parachute. And why not? Parachute commands a 60% market share in the coconut oil market. The secret to this lion's share of the market? Innovation. Harsh Mariwala found an innovative extraction technique that extracted better quality oil from coconuts. The innovation didn't stop here. In those days, coconut oil was stored in 15 kilogram tin containers. Why tin? You see, the combination of oil and plastic was apparently too delicious for rats who attacked plastic containers and destroyed them. However, selling tin containers was also a hassle. Consumers wanted smaller and easier to carry packaging. Plus, Marico wanted to be able to showcase its oil bottles in retail shops. So, Marico innovated. It came up with rounded plastic bottles that couldn't be destroyed by rats. Result? Whopping success. Marico replicated this innovation-led approach in other verticals, from Safola oil to Kaya skin. Now, this newcomer entering and disrupting sectors just like this got the attention of giants like HUL. How did Marico defeat HUL? Keki Dadiset, the chairman of HUL, had a simple strategy for growing, aggressive acquisitions. Marico was on the top of his acquisition list. But Mariwala was not one to give up his dream. That's when the price wars started. HUL's plan was simple. If it couldn't have Marico, there would be no Marico. HUL started selling products at heavy discounts, forcing Marico to reduce its prices. It wanted Marico to bleed money till it died. But Mariwala had a different plan of beating competition. He increased spending on distribution and advertising. It introduced a campaign highlighting the cultural value of coconut in India. This campaign struck an emotional chord with consumers and increased Marico's mind share. Result, Marico posted a double-digit volume growth. This fight for survival taught Marico the importance of persistence. And it is this persistence and continuous improvements that have helped Marico adapt to the changing needs of its consumers and introduce new products. One of the other focus areas for Mariwala has been culture. He always believed that a company's culture can be a make or break. Marico has established a strong culture around the three P's. People, products, profits. Of this, people played an important role. 
Mariwala and his team would personally conduct meetings with new employees to develop the company's values. Marico's trusting working environment encourages experiential learning and unsuccessful experiments serve as lessons for further experiments. Pretty much the ideal environment for work, no? But this lucrative FMCG market is now heating up, with bigger players like Adani and Reliance also now entering the space. And while these players have a whole suit of businesses, Marico is overly dependent on two brands, Parachute and Sephora. If these categories are challenged, Marico could be in serious trouble. So how can Marico defeat the new challengers yet again? Only time will tell. See you in the next episode. Jai Hind.